Hello everyone, my name is Kobashi from Liveboard. In the second part titled, The World Expanded by Data, I would like to hear about Docomo's data, which is the foundation of our company in detail, and deliver a session on how the world will expand due to this data in the future. The speakers are Mr. Yoshida, Manager of Project Promotion, Marketing and Innovation Department, NTT Docomo. Mr. Mira, Deputy Director General, Outdoor Media Bureau, Hakoro DY Media Partners, and Executive Officer and General Manager of Digital Production Department, Hakoro DY Outdoor. Please briefly introduce yourselves. My name is Yoshida from NTT Docomo. Today, I would like to introduce to you the features of Entity Docomo's data utilized in the live board's operations. My name is Mira from Hakodo DY Media Partners and Hakodo DY Outdoor. I'm in charge of overall DX promotion of Hakodo DY Group's outdoor media domain. Let's go back to it. I hear many times that live board is unique in the OH and ODM industries. I think the reason for this is because of the three characteristics I've presented here. The first is the visual visualization of number of people who are viewing the ads, which has been quite difficult until now. The second is targeting in which ads are distributed according to the client's target audience. Effectiveness verification to understand how effective the ads have been after implementation. All of this is supported by Docomo's data. Mr. Yoshida, please tell us in detail why Docomo data makes these things possible. Let me introduce five major strengths of Docomo's data used in the live boards business. The following page introduces our five major strengths from consent on the left to line and explain them on one by one from the next page. The first is the consent. It is very important that various types of consumer data I utilize based on the customer's consent. As you can see on the left side of the page, our company features a personal dashboard, which is a page that manages consumer, customer content, consent. While we utilize the data that we have the customer's permission to use a live board's business. On the right side, it is described as individual and explicit. When a customer expresses a desire to remove his or her consent after having given consent, a dashboard is available to allow the customer to do so, so you can see the various data is used based on customer's consent. Second is the quantity. Let's compare the difference between the two using the location data used in the live board business as an example. This slide shows how much of the different types of data, GPS on the right and carry location data on the left are held by various customers in their smartphone user scenarios. For example, if GPS location data is to be used for business, the customer would turn on GPS on their smartphone device, allow the use of GPS on their OS, and then allow the use of GPS in the app. Only when all four conditions are met will the data be used. However, the location data of our cell phone business 
comes from the data necessary for communication and used with the customer's permission. So the data is accumulated while the customer is holding the smartphone. This example gives you an idea of the large amount of data we have available. Next, let's look at quality. The left side is the data of customers browsing the site on their online cyberspace. And the right side is the data of customers' activities in the real world offline. The difference between this right-left data is analyzed and described. Cyber data is data that is extremely simple to acquire and is of human nature that can be easily captured on instantaneous needs of customers who, for example, surf the internet and browse e-commerce sites while casually lying in bed. On the other hand, the real data on the right side is different in that it is accumulated through actual actions based on customers' inner ongoing needs, such as taking train to a store or going to a festival site in the hot summer to get excited. We believe that the real life location data is very significant in terms of emotional aspects of the data. I would like to look at the fourth point from the viewpoint of variety. Antidocomo is often used in our daily lives for communication and calls. But in fact, Antidocomo is also a provider of various services, such as D-Point and D-Payment. The subscriber information shown on the left side is the data such as gender, age, etc., registered by customers when they sub first subscribe to a cell phone contract, and about 58 million of these data have been stored. As you go to the right side, the data is accumulated based on the permission from services we provide. 33 million payments information, over 90 million D-Point members, and other data used in various customer life scenes are accumulated. And all of which are utilized by Liveboard. The fifth and final point is the line. What you see on this slide is a chart that represents that represents in waveform the actions of customer from the time she wakes up in the morning until the time she goes to bed at night. For example, listening to music when commuting, commuting to work, moving from one area to the other, paying for lunch, going home, relaxing at home, and watching videos on VOD. We recognize D-Point IDs among D-Point members, and we can use these IDs as a single line to understand our customers. This single ID is used to make proposals and introduce new products in the live boards business to enrich the lives of our customers. Finally, our data is zero party, meaning that the data is utilized based on the consent of the customer and they are utilized in a way that they are connected by a single ID.
this information, real behavior, online behavior, and customer information are combined into a box in the middle called DMP, which understands the customer and then the customer understand, understanding engine, which is AI, understands the nature of various customers and is utilized for LiveBoard's business. These are some of the strengths of our data and the major points of its utilization. Thank you, Mr. Ishida. Once again, I was impressed by the wealth of data that carriers have. I think it is difficult to make full use of just a lot of data, but Docomo's technology, which can analyze data to granularly, that is easy for people to understand, it is also supporting our daily proposals. I, re I realize keenly once again. For your reference, here's an example of targeting we are using. By, com by combining survey data, online offline behavioral data, as well as by gender and age, as mentioned earlier, we are able to target more detailed inf info information such as travel enthusiasts, health conscious consumers, and active seniors, as shown here, which I believe is a real strength. I believe this is a real advantage. It is not only targeting that we are able to visualize. We have conducted more than 200 asking surveys, which are also based on Docomo's location information. As a result of these 200 effect effectiveness tests, we are seeing some trends. We are seeing some effects of LiveBoard, for example, to increase the intention to purchase and use, or to increase takeoff speed of a campaign, etc. Mr. Mura, some of these are listed here. Are there any notable points from an agency standpoint? Thank you. I relate very much to the five effects you have mentioned, uh, described here. Among them, I would like to talk about the third effect, which is to boost the effects of TV and digitally, digital by using them together. The premise is, why, why are these three triple screens, including TV, digital, and OH, so important? A similar data has been pro uh, proven in other countries where, for example, a screen at one's hand is called a private screen, and a screen in a public space is called a public screen. The concept of tri triple screens have been advocated by LiveBoard for some time and we also believe that this concept is very important. Clients are likely to use media to achieve their KPIs and goals. And I feel in addition to the current mainstream TV and digital media, OH can be uniquely effective. While TV has procurement efficiency and awareness, the digital has engagement target, reach, and conversion acquisition as their strength, all which has its own specific value. As Mr. Kobashi mentioned earlier, there are social relevance, recency, boost, and frequency effects, and unique to transportation ads not being disliked even after re repeated viewing. We believe that combining these unique effects with TV and digital media will improve the overall performance. To add on the importance of the triple screen, I think that when you place ads on TV and digital, which are currently mainstream, you seek immediate effects to achieve KPIs. However, if the effectiveness of TV ads is determined by beta TV and that of digital ads as beta digital, OH ads, in addition to their standalone effectiveness, can now be seen to have indirect effects that support TV or digital ads when used in combination with OH ads. Adding OH to TV and digital will, will result in the form of triple screen planning. As a group, we still have some work to do in terms of sample size and matching, but we feel that we have finally reach the point where we are ready to start triple screen planning. 
I believe Lightboard is now preparing both asking-based and log-based approaches to effectiveness verification. And I will talk a little about log-based effectiveness verification on the, on the right side. On the lower left side of this figure, is written that OH contact persons are extracted based on location information, but both persons are contacted and not contact OH are extracted. By analyzing this data in Google's Data Clean Room ADH Ads Data Hub, or in our group's DMP Audience One, it is possible to analyze the effects that could not be visualized before in more detail. Here's an example. When we built, built a campaign plan, we ran ads on live board media from the start, which with the goal of gaining early recognition early in the life of the campaign. From the middle of the campaign, similar material was distributed via digital ad and YouTube. Here are the results. On the left side of this page, after being contacted with the large screen of live board, in the first half of the campaign, a significant lift in the completion of rate of video viewed on the screen at hand, screen at hand in the second half of the campaign is observed. Next, on the right side, the effective, effective shown in that the skip rate has also been significantly reduced. This interpretation suggests that, in addition to the standalone effect, placing advertisements in live board media assists in improving the attitude towards contact with, with digital advertising. In other words, it can be expected to have an assisting effect by indirectly supporting the effect of digital advertisements. We are accumulating examples of these effectiveness studies. I would like to say a few final words. Until now, digital advertising and outdoor media have been separated in terms of budget and planning. However, I believe that in the future, it will be possible to analyze and plan digital advertising and outdoor media in an integrated manner and perform PDCA cycles through the use of data. Furthermore, I feel that the platformer's use of data cleanroom has the potential to serve as a bridge between digital and media. We hope that through this kind of verification, our clients who utilize digital ads will also utilize OH ads. Thank you all. When the effects are visualized by data, we tend to focus on direct contributions. However, as you mentioned, I feel that if we can visualize the indirect contributions, we'll be able to quantitatively grasp the, the intrinsic value of OH and OD, ODM. Also, in the context of triple screens, there are many areas that would not be possible without the agency's help, and we look forward to continue to work with them. Finally, as our live board, we believe that we have, we have to advance some science for the triple screen. The science in OH and ODM is shown here. I would like to introduce one such initiative, the verification of logs that include transportation ads. They are classified into several categories, such as those related to train lines, stations, so on. Liveboard has been able to verify the effectiveness of its own outdoor screens and is now able to analyze logs of some in-train screens and signage in train stations. As shown in the output image of the analysis on the right, it is possible to analyze not only the visualization of each of reach, but also convergence to see how the media comp complement each other in terms of reach. For example, as for conversion, for clients of social networking services or game app, how many, how many times the app has actually been downloaded can be analyzed as KPI. Or for fast food restaurants or an apparel store, number of store visits can be analyzed as KPI. We have concluded several demonstration tests on our side, and we, we can see the trends of cross-media effect by overlapping ODM and OH. 
we are unable to show you the actual data. So this is just an image graph, but here's a graph of the conversion rate for each advertising content situation when in-train screen, station signage, and outdoor screens were implemented at the same time. The conversion rate corresponds to the store visit or app downloads mentioned earlier. From the right side, the conversion rate for those who were not exposed to any ads and the single is the conversion rate for those who were exposed to one out of the three media. The double column shows the conversions of those who were hit by two out of three media. Triple is the conver conversion rate of those who were hit by all three of them. Of course, the results vary from case to case. But a major trend is that the conversion rate increases as one moves towards triple exposure. In other words, the results show that higher effects can be expected by using multiple types, types of media together, even within OH and ODM. As Mr. Mira mentioned earlier, by advancing this kind of science, I would like to play a part in elevating the triple screen as a third media after TV and digital. I also believe that there are simple questions uh, such as which of these single double media is the most efficient, which combination of media is the best match, is the best match. This is still hypothetical, but we believe it may vary a bit depending on the client's situation and objectives. As shown on the right side of this example, if the objective is to convert, it is desirable to have multiple con contacts in ODM and OH as shown in the previous trend and to have duplicate contacts within each media. Conversely, if the goal is to achieve a broad reach, it is important to distribute the ads in such a way that there's as little overlap as possible. From the next fiscal year onward, we would like to thoroughly verify which media to use and how many times to use each media for each purpose and how to maximize the effective effectiveness of such media. We would like to focus on controlling the actual delivery of ads according to the results. That concludes the second part. Could each of you give us some final comments? Yes, I'll start. As Mr. Kobayashi and Mr. Mura have explained, I think it is very important to take the viewpoint of marketing science. I am convinced that Docomo's data, which I have introduced, will be a major clue to finding answers to, my, to marketing science from various angles, and I feel that I can be of help in this regards. Thank you very much. I believe that outdoor and transportation advertising have their own unique advantages and effects that TV and digital advertising does not do not have. However, as Mr. Kobayashi and others mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, we are now in a situation where data can be used to visualize the benefits of outdoor media advertising. Our group is committed to doing so and helping our clients. Yes, I myself am very much looking forward to a new world ex expanding not only through ODM and OH, but also through collaborations with data client clean rooms. Thank you very much for your time today.